Another bar paper. This is January 2024. So, uh, I, I can't remember. I don't remember anything about this paper. I don't think I even looked at it. So, I'm basically going to look it out blind. So, whatever I find, it may just be a surprise. But you know why you're here. So, let's just get to the answers one time. January 2024. Section 1. Question 1. Dom is starting a boating business as a digital company. Dom? Huh? Sound like Dom from Fast and the Furious, but... Complete details below indicating whether the following devices recommended to start Dom's business. Uh, input or output. A plotter is a printer, so that is output. A keyboard is input. A scanner is an input device. A printer is an output device. A microphone is an input device. Alright, a microphone takes your voice and puts it in, puts it into the computer. That's basically yeah, five marks, free, free of charge. That's key. Diabetes. There's three types of networks. The types of networks that the syllabus requires you to understand or know. Uh, um, LAN one and man. LAN man and one. Now, I recommend that you write out the whole thing because they may be looking for the whole word. So, put a um, local area on the top. Uh, put metropolitan. If you can't spell metropolitan, that's okay. They don't mark your spelling. Just make sure it's, it sounds like metropolitan. One is wide area on the top. Don would like his network to be wireless. Uh, by the <laughs> I'm so close to using a fast and furious me. I'm so close. All right. Don would like his network to be wireless. Identify one critical hardware component that the device needs to have to access a wireless network and give a reason for the hardware component identified. Okay, so they want you to give a hardware component to access a wireless network and give a reason for the hardware component. To access a wireless network, you're going to need a wireless router or the, in the syllabus, they might have access points. So the actual thing fit is the access point. I hope that they accept wireless router because that's what most students are going to put. But if you want to put like a higher level as a access point is the best name to say, right? Um, the reason kind of tricky because this broadcasts the signal. Broadcasts the signal for the user to connect to. Like it's a signal, like it's a SSID. One of the two. Now there's another hardware component that you need that 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 you must have in order to access the uh, wireless network, which I will say is an, an antenna, right? I'm not sure that the syllabus says anything about an antenna, but uh, actually speaking, without an antenna on your phone, you won't be able to connect a wireless network. So I would argue that antenna is a valid answer, and you would say it picks up the signal. However, I don't know if CX3 would require it to learn that. I don't know. But if you understand that antenna exists, I, I think that is a valid answer. But remember, this is not about your answer being valid. This is about answering the question based on what they want because while well, you're doing their exam, so tough. So yeah, wireless router access point, we'll take that. If I will mark it out, give antenna that because it picks up the signal because you can't pick up the signal without it, right? Uh, the following spreadsheet shows the initial stock for Dom's boating business because we're family. Uh, oh, damn, I did it. Sorry. Yeah, family. Uh, state the formula that would have been used in cell E2. Okay, so we're looking at this spreadsheet here. We have our columns, which are identified by letters, rows identified by numbers. Cell E2 is this value here. What did they do inside here? They have an item, they have a cost, they have a number in stock, and then they have a number in order. So the total value would be the item cost multiply by the number in stock. So, so mathematically speaking, it's multiplication, but in spreadsheets, you have to say equal sign because equal sign says, um, I want to do a calculation. So we say in my spreadsheet, I want to do a calculation. The calculation I want to do is to take what is inside C2 and multiply it using an asterisk. You can't put a multiplication sign because you'll get wrong by D2, right? So equal C2 by D2, that's multiply the two of them and you're good to go, no problem. The most appropriate cells in which each of the following functions could be placed average item of course um I, average item cost sorry so it's you know, it might be wise to say the average item cost might go somewhere here because it's at the bottom of all of the items so 
we will say that is see they didn't put the eight and the nine here so i'll put the eight and the nine for you all to kind of realize so most likely that'll be c8 grand total grand total will be a total of everything so that most likely will fall inside this cell here which would be e8 i feel they didn't put the eight and nine for a reason to see if you'll be able to count like can you count after seven let's see i don't know Okay, so the next one is write an appropriate function to calculate the average item cost of the stock. So to find the average cost of the stock, well, most likely it will be put inside here, like right here. Average will be the average of all of these values from this point here to that. So this basically this block here. So this range is D2 to D7. So when you do the average, same thing, equal sign says, I want to do a calculation average if you do if you put it with avg that's wrong i remember average is a v e r e t you have to put the whole word average of um what is d2 to d7 d2 which will be 586 to d7 should be the uh, d2 colon d7 that means find the average of everything from d2 all the way down to d7 because that's what the range is for and identify the most appropriate formatting style for the contents of the columns with the following heading stock id stock id this is of letters and numbers together so we'll just call that text total value is on um, a monetary amount because that should be money so you could put currency or you could give them accounting also Right, the difference between currency and accounting is currency puts the dollar sign right next to the number and accounting puts the dollar sign all the way to the left and any number will go to the right depending on how big the, the size of the cell is. So if the cell is like that, accounting will be like that. If the cell is like this, a currency will put the 100 right next to it on the right hand side. But those things kind of very specific. I, I don't think they want to, well, they don't want you to know that for this question, but sometimes they want you to know that and... The reason I wanted to know that is because the syllabus could be a little, um, a little very detailed at times. So there are like two reasons why you're probably watching this video. Video reason number one is that you're doing mock exams right now and you want to get the answers to the mock exam because most likely a teacher is going to use this at your mock exam because I don't know, probably about 75 to 80 percent of teachers will just give you back the January paper for your mock exam and you know that and you came here to get the answer so that you will look good while you do your mock exams that's good for you no problem if you're one of those people that are doing that that means you probably need a crash course also so crash courses are usually available on um from my website every single year from April 1st and we have different types of crash courses basic is just a video that goes through the whole syllabus from start to finish that if you really do have a teacher you never learn anything at all you can get your whole syllabus in eight hours watch through that video over and over and over and over and over and over and, over and learn so much in a short space of time that's why it's called a crash course so we have the video we have standard that has a whatsapp group that you'll be able to ask me questions directly then there's pro which has the whatsapp group the video and we do the um the I'll let, like two or three days before we do a marathon session where I just go through some of the hard topics, answer your questions, and basically go until we finish and make sure that you're prepared for IT. But I have some other special ones too, which is like the theory boot camp. The theory boot camp is for people who um want to understand the theory a little better. Probably never had a teacher, so therefore you want that. And then of course the past paper sprint. That's doing all the past papers that are possible. And if you want the whole thing together, we have all that in one package. So if you want to do that, um Crash course, all you have to do is WhatsApp 308 8799. Or you could go to make it simple tt.com dot com forward slash register. So um that's for those of you who want that want a crash course. It is stock item for the first two rows where the spreadsheet is sorted in ascending order based on the column heading item. Right, first two rows. We want to sort the spreadsheet based on items. So this is the column that we're looking at here. Look at this here. And if we sort it by item, we have to go alphabetically. So D comes before everybody. And then F here. Alphabetically. A, B, C, D, E, F. So Dingy and Fender. First two rows. Did the stock item. Of the first two rows so they don't want the name of the 
oh yeah, they want the soccer item, yeah. So dinghy and fender, yeah. That's just sorting, you know. Dinghy and fender. Dinghy and fender. That looks correct there. Yeah. And if you're also looking for general CSEC IT classes and you are you're studying in Form 4 right now and you're looking at this because you are preparing for exams the next year or you want to do exams privately, WhatsApp the same number, 308 8799. That's it for the first question. So I'll see you in the, um, see the next question.